What's going on guys? Unknown player hitting to date once again. We've got some more Destiny 2 stuff to talk about and round up and discuss. So we're less than one week away from the Warmind DLC launching and obviously season three as well. And as usual, Bungie have been teasing stuff and dropping new trailers, lots of blog posts and also even posts on forums and announcements and stuff like that. So I wanted to go over everything you might have missed. On top of that, I wanted to mention some other things like a vendor ranking system, which is different to the Crucible ranks we're getting and even some returning exotics and some story details relating to the Hive and Eris Morn. So as usual, we've got a lot to get through inside this video of course if you'd like to support this channel then leaving a like rating down below would be awesome unless i'm into the first topic so i wanted to talk about seasonal vendor progression or basically a ranking system for vendors outside of crucible which we know we're getting obviously we heard bungie mention it a long time ago like a month or two ago but we haven't heard any updates or any details since then so bungie actually confirmed a few days ago on reddit dmg04 said it is still a thing and it's coming in season three so it is going to be with the dlc this was in response to someone called primo jerry asking why haven't they talked about seasonal vendor progression yet? And then DMG said it is coming in season three. Crucible ranks are a form of this progression, earning different ranks to get different reward packages and tiers. But in regards to Vanguard ranking, he's going to see if he can get some more details on how the system works. But it's still a thing, it does exist, and it's coming next week. Now, when I was at Bungie recently, I did actually ask them myself about seasonal vendor progression and what's the deal with it. Now, the people that I asked didn't have exact details because they didn't work on those systems. They didn't want to give me wrong information, but they did say it's still going to be a thing and it's going to be for some vendors inside the tower and possibly some planetary ones but they weren't sure on the planetary vendor so i'm not sure if people like sloan and failsafe and ashamir i'm not sure if they are going to be getting ranks as well they did say it should work pretty similar to how it was in destiny one so when you turn in packages you go up a level and it's basically going to track them i also asked them if the levels have gotten so far up until this point since destiny 2's launch are going to be counted and they said no everyone's going to start at level zero and also of course every season the ranks are going to reset so i guess it doesn't matter anyway in terms of the loot rewards and how that stuff is going to work again i I wish I had more details, but they were very kind of vague on it. Because like I said, the people I spoke to didn't design this ranking system, so they weren't the best people to ask. But they did say there should be certain challenges or kind of like bounties for each vendor, and that will allow you to rank up and get more progression and XP for them. So it's something Bungie have definitely been very quiet about and haven't mentioned all that much in regards to how the system works. But for those of you asking me about it, I did want to just mention everything that I know and everything I was told at the summit. Again, the details aren't concrete. I wish I could give more info. So seasonal vendor ranks is still a thing. It hasn't been delayed or pushed back. But of course, if Bungie do release some more info about it, I'll let you guys know. So moving on, I want to talk about a bunch of interesting story details and lore and hive secrets that Bungie revealed in a couple of blog posts. So Bungie and Chris Barrett released basically a narrative preview of how the story and the kind of narrative of the game is going to play out from Warmind. And honestly, it seems really good. I think everyone's really happy with it. And it kind of reminds me of the Grimmar cards from Destiny 1. There is a lot of detail here and a bunch of cryptic secrets, but I'll try and keep it very concise and just kind of give you the overview of it. So probably the biggest thing is that we actually found out what the deal is with Zor and the Worm Gods and also Nocris. So as you probably know, and as I've mentioned before, the Hive used to have these five Worm Gods, which are these kind of all-powerful dragon-like worms, and they give Oryx and his sisters their power. So Oryx went and killed the weakest of those five Worm Gods. That's where he got his taken power ability from. So out of those four Worm Gods left, one of them called Zul decided to leave and basically separate from them out of fear that he'd be killed. And he decided to team up with one of Oryx's forgotten about and abandoned sons called Nocris. And that was also Bungie giving the first confirmation that Nocris is is Oryx's son. And that also means there are now only three hive worms left out there. So they're actually the three most powerful ones. So they're probably gonna be quite a challenge. And we'll probably see them in the Sabathun expansion or Destiny 3. Now there's also some details on Hellas Basin, which of course is the location on Mars all this takes place in. Apparently it didn't used to be all icy and snowy, but something caused it to completely freeze over and be buried in ice in just a few days. And right before this big freeze over happened, the hive and a massive creature, probably Zol, actually invaded Hellas Basin. Now all the ice has started to melt and that's why the hive are kind of emerging again. Also, Zavala looked into a bunch of classified and secretive files and said, Rasputin is too dangerous to be allowed back into our world. He said, it's a ruthless machine and we don't know what his goal is. And he also said that it's broken, so apparently it's something weird with Rasputin. It is also interesting how in that log from the Cryptarch, who is basically detailing all this stuff, he said an invasion of a biological entity, including one of massive size. So that is obviously Zol, the worm god. The same thing you see at the end of the Anna Bray trailer, there is some massive worm on Mars. So yeah, that's basically a summary of all the lore stuff that's come out in the past few days. Now, definitely one of the biggest questions is if Eris Morn is going to make a return in this DLC. Akora, Zavala, and Cade, all three of them have all separately said, in like dialogue or in the tower or in strike missions, that Eris Morn is still alive and she's off doing something researching the hive. And they also said they are sure she will come back one day, but they're not sure when. Now, the reasons why she might be involved in the DLC is obviously she is the hive expert. We haven't seen her in any trailers or any hints that she might be coming back, but it would make sense for her to be kind of a surprise. Like, I could definitely imagine Bungie holding that to be a surprise in the campaign when 
she just appears out of nowhere. And there's actually a lore tab where Eris Morn is asking Ashamir if he knows anything about a character called Nocris. So seeing as he is one of the main bad guys of the DLC and Eris Morn is obviously looking into him, it's very possible she'll return because of that. So leave your thoughts and speculation down below in the comments. Do you think Eris Morn is going to return in this DLC or do you think she's going to come back later on with Savathun and the rest of the Hive and the Taken? So moving on, I want to take a look and point out some pretty cool things that are spotted inside the latest trailer that Bungie released. But firstly, we can see the Risk Runner Catalyst and what actually does the weapon. And you can see it gives it a ton more range. Like that's like almost rifle barrel level range. And this is what happens when you apply the Catalyst. Obviously the bonus, we still don't know what the Risk Runner does. But as well as the main buff and also the kill counter, the orb generation, you also get stat bonuses. We also saw a similar thing with the Cold Heart when Bungie showed it off last week. But you can see it has a massive chunk of stability and also reload speed. I really wish Legendary Masterworks got this much of a bonus, but these are actually massive chunks. And again, these are in addition to the actual perks they're getting, like Vigilance Wing is full auto and the Crimson is maxed out 100% range. These exotics that have Masterworks basically get a free perk and also a ton more stat bonuses. Now, speaking of the Vigilance Wing, we can see a brand new ornament for it, which looks pretty cool. It's also being used by Warlock with the Claws of Ahamkara, the returning exotic from Destiny 1. And also, if you look at the screen where he's actually using it in first person, you can see he's got two melee charges. So that confirms these claws are still going to give you two melee charges as their exotic perk. And that probably means it's safe to assume the sealed Ahamkara grasp for the Hunter will probably give you two melee charges as well. So two smoke grenades if you want them. And the Armentarium, which is also returning, is most likely going to give you two grenades and maybe some more special and heavy ammo. We can see the tractor cannon, which now, of course, instantly suppresses targets, which means also taking away their super. That also means pushing people off the map is going to be even better because when you push them off, they can't jump anymore. They're just going to fall to their death. You can also spot the warlock being pushed off. The weapon he's holding is the Anna Bray looking exotic. It is her signature weapon. and It looks, again, just very unique. So it's most likely going to be exotic. But you can hear it being fired here and it does have the same sound as an auto rifle. So it is the very basic generic sound. It's like the same one you'd hear on like hundreds of the very basic auto rifles from Destiny 1. So I'm honestly not sure if this is the real sound or just a placeholder because I can't imagine such a cool and unique exotic having such a basic auto rifle sound. I can't really see it happening. Now I also did a bit of digging and it does seem like this auto rifle may be an energy weapon and also do solar damage. So if you remember those press images, they're super high resolution and if you zoom really far into one of them, you can see a titan holding the weapon. This is the Anabray weapon he's holding because he's holding it in every single press image. In all the other images, you can see him holding this Anabray weapon, so it's definitely the same thing. And here it does clearly look like it's firing solar bullets, so it's most likely going to be a solar auto rifle. Something else that also backs my theory up is that in the comic book image, there's basically a comic book illustration of Anabray holding the weapon firing it, and when she's firing it, you can see this red blast coming out from the weapon. So again, it does seem like it's going to be solar based on the image and also the press image before. So that is everything we know so far about this mysterious Anabray weapon. Now further on in the trailer, you can see three new ship models. So there's one on the top there, which is definitely very new. There's also one on the back, which you can't see very well, and one on the bottom, which looks a bit similar to the Destiny 1 ships. And of course, in the front there, there's one of those tower ships that I mentioned in my previous video. You can also see some new emblems there. So Oryx has the Raid Layer emblem. There's a few Warmind Rasputin ones. Rook has an Iron Banner one, a new emblem. And also Wintermoon at the bottom there has the Hive Escalation Protocol emblem, because that's a symbol. You can also see him rank up, and you've got a cool animation there. He gets 40 tokens, so I guess that's what you get every time you rank up as well as a bonus. And in the back there, you can see Rook BNG has a pretty weird emblem where it says 0 out of 40, and it's got like a chest icon, so that seems to be some kind of collectible on Mars. It is the same shape as those pyramids which were floating, and you can see them on Mars and also in the Arecibo adventure. And that's obviously as well as those data fragments, which there are 45 of, so there are going to be quite a few collectibles dotted around on Mars. And of course, the rank that he hits is Fabled, so that's the rank you're going to hear a lot about. Fabled is when you get the Regix of Claymore, and this of course is the monster that when you get Outlaw active, just has ridiculous DPS and high damage and also high rate of fire. So this weapon is going to be the beast to chase. So moving on, in terms of things happening right now in Destiny, obviously the weekly reset came and with it came the Iron Banner 6v6. Once again, this is the very last Iron Banner of Season 2. So this is your last chance to get the ornaments, the weapons and armor are still staying. But next Tuesday when Season 3 starts, you won't ever be able to get those ornaments ever again. So if you want some of those, make sure you get them. Also, this week's Nightfall is Savathun's song, so you can actually get the auto rifle called the Duty Bound. I grinded it pretty much all day and it took me until the ninth attempt, so finally got it. The strike itself is actually pretty fun. I didn't mind it. I know some people don't like the Savathun strike, but I thought it was okay, especially if you have Night Stalkers in there, Orpheus Rig is really good for it. The main thing is that on console, the recoil is pretty bad. It's kind of similar to Scathe Lock, and this one comes with Zen Moment or Rampage, so it's a pretty weird one. I honestly wish you could have both these perks. I don't like having to choose between them, because I feel like Zen Moment is kind of essential to make the weapon not kick all around the place, but Rampage is obviously a very, very good perk and something really good in auto rifle, so I wish you could have both, but I kind of feel the need to always run Zen Moment, because like I said, the recoil is pretty nasty on this thing. But if you play on PC, 
PC though, that problem wouldn't really be a thing. So I'd imagine on PC, this weapon is absolutely amazing. It's not quite on the same level as the DFA and I probably wouldn't recommend it for Crucible because again, the kick. So it's a good weapon, but it's not like absolutely amazing like DFA. It's not a must have, but it is definitely more worth going for than the ship or the ghost or the sparrow we've got recently. So let me know down below in the comments if any of you guys have the duty bound yet, if you got it to drop for you and also let me know what you think of it. So there we go. As promised, a ton of interesting stuff crammed into one video for you guys. As always, if you enjoyed this video and if you want to support this channel, then leaving a like rating down below would be much appreciated. Of course, I'm going to have a bunch more videos on this channel in the coming days because Bungie have still got a bunch more announcements to make and I've still got more things I want to talk about. And then obviously on Tuesday when the DLC launches, I'm going to have a bunch of videos going up. So make sure you are subscribed if you're new to my channel. Until then, if you want to watch another video from me, you can click the image on screen right now to be taken to it. But with that said, I appreciate you guys watching this video and all your constant support and I'll see you all in the next one.